The InDesign interface is very flexible, and it allows us to change it up so that it's most suited for how we like to work. There are a number of things that we can change, and I'd like to point out some of them now. First of all, you'll notice we have a single document open, and then it takes up most of our attention. It's right there in the middle of everything. However, over on the right-hand side, you'll see our panels, and at the bottom of the panels, we can see our desktop lurking underneath. That can be a distraction for some people. Being able to see the desktop through the interface is something that's available only on the Macintosh, and so we can mimic the Windows behavior by using what we call the application frame. Under Window, choose Application Frame at the bottom of the menu. Remember, this only applies to Macintosh users. Windows users already see InDesign in this mode. This now changes InDesign slightly, and it puts the entire InDesign environment into one window. Let's expand that to fill the screen. This view is very similar to the view that the Windows users are already familiar with. The difference for the Windows users is that the application menus are inside of this window. For us Macintosh users, it's above the window. Let's look at the Tool Panel for a moment. The Tool Panel is on the left, and it contains all the tools that you need to interact with content in your InDesign document. By default, it comes as a single column, but for those of you who are familiar with earlier versions of InDesign, or perhaps even PageMaker, or Illustrator, or other tools, you might like those tools to be in a two-column view. Simply click the double arrow on the top, and that will turn it into a two-column view that you might be more familiar with. Those little arrows will appear at the top of all of the panels, in fact, and they can be used to expand and collapse the panels at will. Click it again to turn it back to single column. Looking over on the right, you'll see our Pages, Layers, Links, Strokes, Color, and Swatches panels. These are all part of the Essentials workspace. If I don't want to see the names, I can collapse them to icons, or I can turn it into more of a Control Panel type view. Now we're in the Control Panel view, which is kind of a legacy view from earlier versions of InDesign. You can see that each of the panels appears as a tab, and we can see the contents of those panels listed below them. Click that again, and it goes back to Icons. You can shrink the panel by clicking the space between the document and the panels, and dragging it to the right. Now we're down to Icons. Something you'll notice is that the InDesign document itself grew to fill the space. So if you've got a lot of content on your document and you want to see more of it, one of the things that you can do very easily is simply collapse the panels on the right to their icons. If you click on one of the icons, that panel will open and you will have access to its contents. So clicking here will open the Pages panel and I can see the contents of the Pages panel and I can use it to manipulate my document. The last thing we'll take a look at is how documents appear in the InDesign environment. And so we see a single document right now, and it's attached to the InDesign environment. Let's quickly create a new document using all of the default settings and see what happens. Under the File menu, pull down New and select Document. Accept all of the default behaviors by clicking OK. You'll see that this new document has appeared as a new tab in our application frame. It's called Untitled 2, and it's sitting to the right of the Chapter 1 Sale Flyer. You can detach these tabs simply by clicking on the name and then dragging it away. When I release my mouse, that document will now be free-floating. Now the document is free-floating, much like older behaviors for InDesign and other Adobe applications. I prefer the new tabbed interface, so I'm going to put this document back onto the application frame. Click the title bar, and simply drag it onto the frame. You'll see that the edge will turn blue, and then when we release it, it will attach itself back to the frame. To go back and forth between documents, all we've got to do is click the tab.